hey guys and welcome back to my channel or if you are new welcome to my channel so today's video is a little hard for me to film i was actually contemplating whether i should film this or not i was actually supposed to film this video yesterday but i didn't have time and i originally planned to film today which i am still doing but i was a little hesitant because when i woke up i did get news of the current investigation and i was honestly really destroyed just from what i heard and i have been following this case ever since it was put out in the media the whole community was so involved in this case and i think it's because molly reminds people of their daughters their cousins their friends sisters and and i think that's why i was so involved into this case because I have an older sister, but looking at Molly, I was like, what if that was my sister? Like, I would want people to be putting out the news of her disappearance because if somebody does stumble upon a video, maybe somebody knows something or somebody could put in a tip. But then this morning, it was pronounced that they did find her body. So I do want to still put up this video. If I'm like stuttering, it's because I'm like, I'm still really shocked. Today I'm going to be talking about the Molly Tibbetts case. So if you are interested, then go ahead and keep on watching. Molly was born in San Francisco and she actually moved to Brooklyn, Iowa when she was in the second grade with her mom and her two brothers. A lot of people described Molly as being a light in their life. She was always super charismatic towards people. She always wanted to lift their spirits and she was a very happy girl. She wanted to see everybody happy around her and she was just amazing. Molly won state speech competitions, she was involved in theater, and she also ran cross country. So she was a very athletic girl. Molly was a sophomore at the University of Iowa. She is from Brooklyn, it's a small town in Iowa, with approximately 1,500 people, which is a very small town, and in this town, people know each other, people know about everybody's business, so it's not that big. Molly was asked to babysit her boyfriend's two dogs while he went away for work his name is jack dalton they had been dating for two years on july 18th or july 17th i believe she was dropped off by one of her brothers around 5 p.m her boyfriend jack claimed that him and his brother actually left for work at 5 a.m and where they were traveling was about 50 miles from his house. She was taking care of the dogs and the dogs would actually be put away, I don't know if it was in their kennels or in the basement, whenever she would leave. So she actually went out for a jog. Um, her family described her as being a nature of habit, meaning she would always schedule her day in order. Like she would always have like a set schedule. So she actually went jogging between five to 7 p.m. And she always went before it got dark because you know you always want to be safe you want to be seen while you're running because it can get a little dangerous so she went jogging in the area that she typically goes jogging in so when she was done jogging she came home did some homework on her laptop because i believe she was taking online courses at about 10 p.m she did send a picture message to her boyfriend jack and jack opened it he stated that he doesn't remember what the message said but it was a picture of herself and later that night it's it's unclear what really happened the next morning on july 19th which was thursday jack actually sent molly a text message saying good morning and you know he was working throughout the whole day when you're in construction it's you typically like don't look at your phone so jack actually received a call from molly's co-workers stating that she did not come into work and it was very unlike her because she never missed work she didn't even call in sick so it was very strange that she didn't even call in sick yet show up and molly actually worked at the regional medical center she worked in the daycare so jack called her and when he looked at the message he realized that she didn't even open the message at all so he got a little worried and he called molly's parents pretty much said like molly didn't show up for work have you guys seen her and when mom received the call she knew that something was wrong so she immediately came home and they called the police the police came and investigated inside jack's home 
you always want to make sure that you're you know this is kind of like standard for police to do they always check out the people closest to the victim so they did check jack's house and they noticed that the dogs were locked up i don't know if it was in the basement or in their kennels but they would have assumed that molly either put them there because i mean they couldn't get there by themselves and another thing that I'm questioning that isn't really being talked about is it almost sounded like Molly didn't have a car. Me, like here I am wondering like how does she typically get to work if she was dropped off by her brother? Like it kind of sounded like she didn't have a car so that's something that I was a little curious about like how, I don't know, I guess I'll go into that further later. They searched Jack's house. They noticed that there was no sign of any struggle. They searched Molly's mom's house. Didn't see anything that was out of the ordinary. Or they did interview Jack molly's boyfriend her brothers and mom dad they were not considered suspects they were in the clear when the whole community heard about this they were freaking out because it was a small town nothing like this ever happened so they were searching they were searching in cornfields and ditches they were searching lakes they were searching everywhere for her but there was no sign of her when molly went jogging she actually did have her phone and her fitbit and they noticed that her both of those things were missing so they thought that by her having them they could possibly track it and they were trying to get information from the fitbit because the fitbit does track your footsteps they checked her laptop social media to see if anything was out of the ordinary but they didn't i don't know if they found anything but i know that there is more information coming out today so they were searching everywhere um, a lot of shops were making buttons they were making t-shirts posters they were literally plastering them all over iowa everybody was trying to look for her the whole community was so involved in this case and like i said it's because i believe that in molly they saw their daughters their cousins their sisters a friend she had a lot of friends so when they heard about this they knew that something was wrong like something just wasn't sitting right with them so it was very strange because it's almost like she disappeared into thin air molly was last seen wearing a pink sports bra black shorts and running shoes there was an eyewitness that believes that he was the last person to see molly i will put his name on the screen i don't exactly remember it but he said that he always noticed a woman running by his home like three to four times a week and then he didn't see her for a while so he thought something was off and he did hear about Molly on the news so he was like maybe that's her so he decided to call in. The police came to search his home, ask him a few questions. He was a little frantic because he does have kids and I see how being the last person that has seen her that could be a little scary and it's intimidating so he was a little hesitant but he was questioned and he was not considered a suspect he actually put his daughters in the bathroom while they were searching his home and he claimed that the police were super polite while they were searching his home and he was cleared there was also another witness that stated that there was a black suv in the area pretty much just circling around from 10 p.m to 1 a.m so she did call in and say that it was really strange because she had never seen this car by her house and it looked suspicious i mean he was just circling around they did interview hundreds of people there was a lot of tips that were being called in about 200 even more has been going on for 34 days i believe since july 18th they also knew that it was very unlikely that molly ran away because she was actually supposed to attend a wedding as one of the bridesmaids for her brother-in-law's wedding and she was really close with them she was really close with the fiance and she was just looking forward to it it was coming up on august 2nd in the dominican republic and apparently she was super excited about this so they knew that she couldn't have run away a few days later or a few weeks later the search was called off because you know there was so many people coming in to help look for her that it could possibly tamper with the evidence if there was any evidence there was about 30 to 40 police officers special agents searching for molly so there was a lot of people working this case molly and her dad were very very close she was actually his best man when he got married to his wife molly really liked her stepmom so they had a really good relationship there was just no sign of molly anywhere it's literally like she had 
vanished and it's like how does that even happen like there has to be somebody that saw something so they did also interview a man by the name of Cheney, I believe was his last name. He owned a pig farm and the reason why they checked into him, I think it's because, well, first of all, he had a few charges against him for stalking and harassment against his ex-girlfriend. They actually interviewed him five times and they asked him to take a polygraph test. He refused the first time. Apparently he did take it the second time, but that information has not been let out to the community. So I'm not really sure what happened with that Greg Willie from Crime Stoppers actually raised four hundred thousand dollars for the return of Molly, but now it's for any other information that people have. You can call the tip line and remain anonymous. So as of today, August twenty first, Molly Tibbetts' body was actually found in how chic. Iowa. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. They do actually have somebody in custody. His name is Christian Rivera. He's 24 years old. He did actually lead investigators to her body and and investigators say that they did use surveillance video to track him to see where he was the night of Molly's disappearance. So they actually did have footage of Rivera in the same area that Molly went jogging. So they did say that he was actually stalking Molly while she was out on her jog and I'm sure that he followed her home and maybe noticed that she was home by herself with the dogs being locked in their kennel or the basement. I'm not sure where they were locked up in but it almost looked like she was leaving because why else would they be in there unless she recognized him and maybe she was on her way to work I don't know how she the one thing that I want to know which people might find a little weird But how did she get to work or how does she get to work? Does she walk because if this is the case after her jog, it sounded like she went home from what investigators had found and the Snapchat message sent to her boyfriend at 10 p.m It's like maybe she left in the morning was on her way to work since you know the dogs were locked up that's truly the only the only explanation that I can think about of why they were locked up and why there was no sign of struggle maybe she was on her way out and if she was walking maybe that's how he got a hold of her I don't even know it's really hard to even speculate as to what could have happened to her I guess you guys will find out if you are involved in this case and you are following it that you will later find out how it happened and what happened I'm not sure if Molly personally knew him. There's not a lot of information coming out about him just yet, but I'm sure that there will be more information coming out later today. They are having a press conference at 5 p.m. So if you guys want to stay involved in the case furthermore, you guys should check out the press conference that's going to be coming out. There's not a lot of information about how she was murdered, but I'm sure that there will be more information coming out further into this investigation, you know? And and although people are gonna say this is justice, it is a form of justice that they found out who did it, but I just think it is so, 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 so messed up how somebody could do this. And Molly reminded me of like my older sister. The way that people described her, she was just a light in everybody's life. And I don't know why he did this. It's disgusting that somebody could ever do this to anybody. I mean, it almost feels like there's never justice because she's not coming back and it, it's devastating. Imagine it being your family or friend. I wish it was different, but I hope that this guy serves many years. I'm pretty sure he's gonna serve life in prison. My deepest condolences do go out to her parents and her brothers, her family, her friends, and I hope that you guys can find peace one day. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please be respectful in the comments, that's all I ask for, and if you guys want to keep updated on this case, I will go ahead and leave some links down there. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.